Okay, so people who have chosen to look at genetics inheritance, let's quickly give you a little bit of background so you're not struggling entirely with the style worksheets. Um, I'll try and do this reasonably quickly. So, what are genes? Well, genes are essentially a piece of DNA, a section of the DNA, and that section codes for a protein, and that protein causes a trait. So, for instance, hair colour, shove your nose, can you roll your tongue? And then these things are passed on from one parent to their children, and from both parents to their children. So you are a mixture of the genes that both your parents hold. And that mixture causes you to be a bit different to both your parents. You know, you've got some variation going on, which is really useful. Um, and we talk about a genome as being all of the genes of a particular individual, so an organism, or you can talk about the genome of a species, which is a bit broader, because we've got lots of variation for each gene, which we'll talk about when we talk about alleles. Um, <clears throat> this is called the study of heredity, you know, again, how things are inherited. <clears throat> so alleles are essentially alternative forms of a gene. So originally there would have been the wild type, the original nucleotide sequence that coded for a particular protein that, well, in the case of uh, humans, causes to have dark skin, dark hair, dark eyes. We, we, we evolved in on the savannah plains of Africa, in the Great Rift Valley, where we were close to the equator and problems with skin cancer as a real issue. So we were dark, you know, importantly. There are 360 odd genes involved in your skin color and skin tone. So those proteins all work together. And as we moved away from that living in, in Africa and started to move around the world into the colder climes, we had to reduce the amount of melanin giving out dark skin because we need to take up more vitamin D from poor light sources. And so we get these variations and these variations are caused by different alleles, still changes in the, the um, nucleotide sequence, still changes in the proteins. And over time that becomes you know, quite distinct changes between groups of humans. But we are all the same blood. Um, and so these, these allele variations allow us to evolve and to change and to adapt to um, new spaces and in time can produce completely new species. So this is how diversity is created on the planet. Um, our genetic code is, is sort of has these characteristics that you need to be aware of. We actually read the nucleotides, the structure that makes up DNA, in sets of three, in triplets. Those triplets don't overlap, so three, tri three nucleotides code for a particular amino acid, and you can't overread them. Um, so the code's not overlapping, it's code is universal, all living things have the same code. So everything alive on this planet uses the same genetic code, which means you can take a gene from any other organism and put it into any other organism. Um, the code is said to be redundant or degenerate, as you often have more than one triplet for the same amino acid. Um, there's 64 potential combinations of uh, the amino acids, but only 20 um, amino acids available. The code contains the instructions to assemble the amino acids into a protein. Um, it's unambiguous. It, what it tells you is what it tells you. And it also includes a start instruction, and there are three stop instructions. So you start reading now, stop reading now. When you're making it, this is these really important uh, features of the genetic code. So here's our, our DNA, as we now see it, made using modeling to show that. Um, and you see how when it joins, it forms these, it's just two, two strands, and they form this wonderful helix shape because of the way they join together. And we find these in all eukaryotic cells, so all higher organisms like ourselves, and then bacteria like the prokaryotes all have this DNA. In um, eukaryotes like our cells, these are created into chromosomes, so sections of DNA, pieces of DNA, each of them having their own genes on them. So you've got a collection of human DNA here. We have 46 chromosomes in 23 pairs, 23 from each parent. Uh, and you can see these here in their exposed site. Um, as what we can make a carrier type from that sort of information. <clears throat> these are nucleotides I talked about before, adenine, thymine, guanine, cytosine. And then thymine always join together, guanine and cytosine always join together. So you've got a C there, you can have a G on the other side. 
and this these are the nucleotides and then around the outside there of the helix is this uh, sugar phosphate so deoxyribose nucleic acid and this is the ribose the sugar and it's got a, a phosphate background sugar phosphate backbone um, <clears throat> I won't go into a lot more detail you don't need to know too much at this stage this is a human male I'll get my head out the way for a minute there's our first chromosome there's pairs, pairs of chromosomes one of those chromosomes has come from mum one chromosome has come from dad and we've got a pair for each of the chromosomes 1 through 22 I know it's a male because it's got one X chromosome and which would have come from mum and a Y chromosome which has to come from dad because dad's the carrier of the Y's these aren't a pair as you can see they've got different lengths these are all pairs their centromere is lined up in the same place the same length they carry the same genes and we can actually quite quickly and reasonably do these reasonably quickly because you take up the cells so the snot hair skin sperm whatever's got dna in it we can create a carrier type quite quickly um, mutations are always something of interest because you are all mutants we have all chained left our wild type behind and are all different which means we're all different to each other which means we all carry mutations which are advantageous rather than disadvantageous so you can see a lovely little collection here of of flies fruit flies and that's your normal fruit fly these other five are mutant forms um, you'd imagine this guy here with these smaller wings could still fly and that one possibly not um, they probably fly these guys probably don't so the wing shape here is a, is a mutation I'm looking at and also there's, there's some differences there elsewhere as well now, these probably fly quite well but some of these aren't going to survive because they're not going to be a fly others are going to fly fine so there's, there's changes in the in the amino acids created by changes in the nucleotides which produce a protein which just changes the way this thing's seen that's all a mutation really is some are good some not so good some you wouldn't even know that happened um, when you start studying inheritance you're looking at patterns of these alleles being um, uh, inherited <clears throat> so we talk about individuals who are homozygous and heterozygous if you're homozygous your alleles are the same if you're heterozygous your two alleles one from each parent will be different um, and so we get it sorry the genotype then is described as being a big b big little b um, or you know big a little a or something you know two big b's in this case and then the phenotype is what you actually look this what you actually look like and the phenotype is also influenced by the environment the physical environment the social emotional environment because of all that even what how our brain works is influenced by the genes under light or um yeah so some characteristics are pretty straightforward it's all about genes i can't run my tongue ah, doesn't work some people roll their tongues quite easily others can do all sorts of amazing things because they're the genes which cause the muscle structures that allow you to manipulate this tongue I just said but other things are affected you know if you go out in the sun and get a suntan you've changed your skin color it's an environmental effect yeah haven't un changed underlying genes but you've changed the expression of them um, often poor nutrition at critical times means you don't achieve your correct height that sort of thing we talk about three types of what of patterns of inheritance we can be dominant so com or complete dominant so in this case I've gone for the big nose versus small nose and for some reason it's turned all my little bees into oh because of stupid computer uh, yes that's not so good is it so this should be a big B big B homozygous dominant individual so we haven't got this as a, the parent here the father we've got a homozygous recessive individual little B little B so they've got a small nose and all their kids have got a big B from dad and a little B from mum and they've ended up being big b little b so they'll all have big noses but they all carry the allele to pass on to their children for small noses and i apologize about these slides because the uh, this particular design features put everything into capitals beautiful that's going to play havoc as we move through isn't it um <clears throat> so this is called a punnett square really quite useful little technique 
we had what's also called incomplete dominance. And the guy who did all this Mendel was quite blown away because he's working with flowers in peas. And he had what he called white pure breeding flowers and red pure breeding flowers. And he thought when he put them together, he'd get pink. He, he would get uh, red dominating the white. And when he did put them together, he got pink. Yeah, pink, what? And of course, think about it, red and white make pink, don't they? So the proteins being made by the white alleles and the proteins being made by the red alleles blended and gave pink rather than the red dominating the, the white. And so you discover, of course, a new system for inheritance where the, um, the red and the white blend. So these guys, the red father, white mother, and all the offspring are pink. You take two pink offspring and you breed them together, you get a red, a white, and two pink. Statistically. Um, <clears throat> the other interesting one is co-dominance, where a couple of alleles can't, they blend, they can't um, defeat each other, but they are dominant over something else. And our blood typing, uh, AB blood groups, are a really good example of that. So you have the A allele, you have the B allele, this should be a little I, um, lowercase i, and so there's no antigens presented, so it's a sort of recessive trait. So the A-type blood can be big A, big A, or big A, little i. B-type blood, big B, big B, or a big B dominant over little i. And then the AB-type blood is the A and B both present, and they're both being expressed. They're both, being, they're both making proteins. Whereas the O-type blood makes no proteins at all. <coughs> they call that co-dominance. And the other type of inheritance is sex-linked. Obviously, there are genes which are found only on the X chromosome, and genes are found only on the Y chromosome. And these are often quite interesting to study. There's some traits that get passed through families down um, the mother's line. Because, of course, the mother can carry the disease or disorder. In this case, it's um, using red-green colour blindness. It's not really a disease, it's just you know, a difference. Um, she can carry it and not pass it on. They're not, not have the problem. But if the, she marries a guy with that disease, that disorder, we're going to see some of her daughters get it and some of her sons, and she'll have carrier daughters and the sons who are normal. So you, you see, we follow these traits through families. So this is because this is, you only need one as a male to show the disease, disorder, uh, you need both in the female to show the disorder. So it's a, it's a little variation on the system. And that hopefully helps you as you work your way through the, uh, the style worksheets.